Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about compression set of rubbers. So that's a pretty common problem. Rubber materials are often used in seals, O-rings, and other applications where they are under compression for a long period of time, and then they're supposed to perform and not permanently deform. And in a case like this, it's really important, of course, to be able to simulate the performance of the of the polymer, the rubber and see how it springs back in your simulation before you design your part. So being able to predict permanent set is really important. The question here that I want to talk about today is what experiments should you run to accurately be able to simulate this kind of behavior? And secondly, what material models work for cases like this? Um, what is the choice of material model? Which doesn't work and which does work? So those are the things I will focus on in our presentation here today. I will start by talking about some experimental data, and I'll do that by showing a window of um, M calibration where I have some experimental data already loaded. So here are three unaxial compression tests. There are three different strain rates, as you can see here. And uh, if I plot it in not as stress versus strain, I can plot it engineering stress strain, I can plot it stress versus time. You see that these tests have stress relaxation segments on uh, in them. So the, the, uh, the slowest test here had the stress relaxation time uh, here, as you can see. And the stress relaxes a lot in these experiments. So it has information about the viscoelastic response. But the question really is, is this enough information to predict the permanent set after unloading uh, for this particular material? And um, if it's not enough, then what should we have? What kind of experimental data is missing? And uh, the answer to that is that the data here really is useful, but it's not quite sufficient for uh, accurate material model calibration. You need additional information. And what you need is, uh, what I recommend at least, is the ASTM standard D395 for compression set testing of rubbers. And this is one of these experiments that is really nice because it's so simple to do and it gives you exactly the kind of information you need. And here's a screenshot from the standard itself. Uh, you have these spacers and you have rubber specimens that are being compressed between these um, spacers uh, in this fixture. So you take your specimen, you uh, tighten up the fixture and the specimens sit in this fixture for long periods of time and then you open it up. Sometimes they even sit at higher temperature uh, for weeks or months. Then you take them out of the, of the furnace or the oven. You open them up and you let them cool down. And then you look, look at the, the final dimensions to look at how might they actually have changed the dimensions due to this exposure, the compression set, that, that is. And uh, if you do a quick search for compression set, you'll see that there are tons and tons of companies selling these uh, fixtures. You can make your own very easily, as you can see. They're very basic tests. So in this case, for the example I'm looking at, we have the uniaxial compression test as three strain rates, but also performed uniaxial compression, this, this I'm sorry, this uh, permanent set experiments. Uh, in one test, I compressed the rubber specimen 15%, and I held it there for six months at room temperature. And after the test, we had a 5% permanent set of this rubber. Uh, and at a test, I compressed it for 30 to 30% 30 strain. I held that for six months. And that gave me a permanent set of 8%. So those numbers are really important to know, of course, uh, when you're trying to come up with a good material model that can match this data. So how would you, how would you de deal with this in, um, in the calibration software? So let me show you how it looks like in M calibration. So here you can have a, a combination of uniaxial compression, tension, or different strain rate, and this permanent set data. So I have two already loaded here. I'm going to double click on the first one. And the load case type is permanent set. And this is mimicking this ASTM standard that I mentioned. And the number of different steps that are defined here. So first, you compress it to a certain strain, and then you hold that for a certain number of times, in this case, six months. Then you unload it, and then you let it sit for a little time, in this case, 30 minutes. And then you specify what the permanent set is uh, that you measured experimentally. M-calibration will then perform this experiment uh, internally 
and then it will compare the predicted permanent set to the experimental permanent set. So it's a very easy way to fi find the material parameters to match both the compression data at different strain rates and the permanent set data. And the key here, and this is important, you really are going to have a hard time predicting permanent set unless you also have experimental data for permanent set. You don't get the permanent set prediction for free simply because you did the uniaxial compression test. You actually have to hold the material fixed in that confined state for quite a while and then unload it to see how does the material behave. It's that kind of response. Um, so once you've done that though, you are good. You can, you can simulate this, you can calibrate this. What I will do here is I will show you the predictions for, uh, from a few different commonly used materials to see if they can predict the response to be measured for this particular rubber. My first example is a Yo hyperelastic material model. And you may say directly, uh, at least I hope you would, that Yo hyperelasticity clearly cannot predict permanent set. It's an elastic material model. It may be nonlinear elastic, but it's clearly elastic. And that's what M calibrations agrees with. You can see that the error here is 100%. That is, the predicted permanent set is zero, even though the experimental is a finite value. So that's how that's indicated. You also miss, of course, all the viscoelastic strain rate effects, etc. So using a hyperelastic material model is clearly not a choice that you should use for a problem like this. Another kind of uh, option potentially could be to use a yo hyperelastic model with a Mullins damage model. So the question here is if you activate Mullins damage, does that help with permanent set? And the answer is no. It does not change the stress at complete unloading. It will have no permanent damage. It will be uh, an error of 100% for these two load cases. It's not a good idea. It's not significantly better than hyperelasticity by itself. So that's not a choice that I would recommend. Uh, what else could we do? Well, how about this? How about a hyperelastic model with linear viscoelasticity? So I looked at that. I calibrated a Yo hyperelastic model with a, a Prony series linear viscoelasticity model. When I run this, I get predictions that are equally bad, unfortunately. That is, you can get a certain amount of slow recovery and therefore uh, potentially a bit of a linear uh, permanent set with this kind of model but you can't match both the uniaxial compression data in this case and the permanent set. We get virtually uh, no permanent set whatsoever with linear viscoelasticity. I do not recommend using this kind of model if you want to predict uh, the permanent set of rubber-like materials. Not a good choice. Uh, so we've tried now a number of these that clearly don't work. Well, let's try something that perhaps is starting to be a little better. So the next one is the Bergstrom Boys model. This is the model I developed a number of years ago for rubber-like materials. Is this a better choice? Well, if you run this one, I just loaded up my saved calibration here to save time. We'll see that the Bergstrom Boys model can have predictions of permanent set that are close to zero. There is perfect prediction of permanent set, but unfortunately, you sacrifice the viscoelastic response if you do that. You could also do the opposite. You can get very good fit to the compression data, but then you don't get the permanent set. So the, the classical Bergstrom Boys model can't do both in this case. So it's a little bit of, of, of a problem there. What else could we do though? Well, it turns out that if you use the Bergstrom Boys model, but you activate Mullins damage. So here is a, a, the polyumod version of that Bergstrom Boys Mullins damage, and you calibrate that to the data, you will see that by doing that, you actually get really fantastic predictions. Now we have permanent set predictions that are perfect, basically perfect. Uh, and this, the, the cyclic data at different strain rates is very good too. The errors are small. On average, the model, this type of model has an error that's 4.8% on average. And that's really good. That's, uh, that's kind of the order of experimental variability from one specimen to another. So this is often as good as you can get uh, in terms of average error in the model prediction. So this is nice. This shows us that this actually is, an, is a strategy that works for this kind of problem. Um, so let's try something else. Let's try a, an abacus PRF model. So this is an abacus parallel rheological framework. It's a two network model, Yo hyperelasticity power, 
low flow and Mullins damage. So this is actually not all that different than the model he has talked about. It's just called something else. It has slightly different uh, elements to it. And the error is 5.2%. So it's not quite as good as the one we just talked about, but it's still pretty decent. We get very good predictions of the permanent set and a little bit less uh, accurate of the compression set. You can kind of select which of these two types of data that you want to uh, emphasize. But this is another reasonable approach for permanent set predictions of these types of materials. The last one I want to talk about, I have already a window here. It's going to open that up. So, um, this is a, no, let me open another one. Let me go back here and open up um, this one. So here is another material model. This is an ANSYS, a bergstrom boys model with Mullins damage. So the point of this uh, here is to show you that um, the ansys bergstrom boys model with dam Mullins damage can also very quickly be calibrated using M calibration. And it works equally well. The error is 5.3% as well. It's an excellent choice uh, for this. Uh, no surprise, right? It's a very much the similar model to the other Bergson boys with Mullins model. The last model I want to talk about that I started to get into, and here we are now, is a material model. Sometimes it's called the FEFP model. So if you look at the parameters, you would recognize this is a yo hyperelasticity with um, a Mullins damage and also a little bit of plasticity. So it's a little bit of isotropic hardening metal plasticity in it. And if you calibrate this model, you get an error that's about 9%. So it's not as good. There's no rate effects in this particular case, but it has a little bit of ability of predicting the permanent set as well. And you can calibrate this one in M calibration using a template. And here's the template that I used for that. So, so that's the end, end of my presentation. The, to summarize, it turns out that it's actually very simple to predict permanent set of rubbers. There is no particular challenge that is difficult. You need to do, do a few things. You need to first uh, have enough experimental data and you need to have permanent set experimental data that I talked about before. I do recommend that ASTM standard. So take a look at that if you don't already use that in your testing. Secondly, you need to pick one of these types of models that I emphasized here. The Bergstrom Boys and Mullins model tend to be very good for this. Uh, there are some of these other models that sometimes add a little bit of plasticity that can be helpful sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't make a difference. It sort of depends on your material, so keep that in mind. And finally, uh, once you have all the data and you have picked your material model, the M calibration software makes this calibration very much easy to do and automatic. So take a look at that if you don't already use M calibration. So that's, that's it on my, my discussion about permanent set predictions. I hope you find it useful. And head over to polymerfm.com if you have any questions. Thanks.